बिफोर आई टीच यू अबाउट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ मनी लॉन्डरिंग है ना ये हो जाएगा हम वो क्वेश्चन देख लेते हैं लेट मी टीच यू द कॉन्सेप्ट फर्स्ट एंड देन वी कैन लुक एट वेरियस थिंग टू लर्न अबाउट मनी लॉन्डरिंग सो फर्स्टली इवन इन माई साइंस एंड टेक एन एनवायरमेंट कोर्स पीपल हु I taught you about something called word breakdown, and this must have helped you in this year's prelims also, especially with that aerial metagenomics question. So look at the word breakdown: money laundering. What is laundering? Laundering comes from the word laundry. What is laundry? A laundry is a place where we wash dirty clothes. Okay. So money laundering is effectively converting dirty money, money that is dirty, into clean money. how it is done what are the steps etc that we will see but first let us look at the previous year questions from money laundering there have only been three questions so far the first one was asked in 2030 so it says money laundering poses a serious threat to country's economic sovereignty okay what is its significance for india and what steps are required to control so significance here basically is asking you about the impact of money laundering on the indian state and some steps that are required that are there to counter money laundering so we need some impact we need steps next question india's proximity to two of the world's biggest illicit opium growing states like i just taught you there is the golden triangle and the golden crescent both close to india has been has enhanced her internal security concerns okay explain the linkages between drug trafficking and other illicit activities such as gun running money laundering and human trafficking this is effectively a question of organized crime but here also you need to know the basics of money laundering to answer it okay although this question will be dealt when we deal about organized crime what counter measures should be taken to prevent this you get this idea then discuss how emerging technologies and globalization contribute to money laundering now this is a very interesting question very specific dimensions are asked one emerging technology and its link with money laundering two globalization and its link with money laundering then it says elaborate measures elaborate measures to tackle the problem of money laundering both at national and international levels so this is effectively a repeat of the 2013 question where they were asking about the steps required steps required to control this measure against steps required to control this measure at national international measures so as you can see this part is the same here they have just added two dimensions one is emerging technology the other dimension is globalization understood okay now first let us understand what money laundering is let's get a basic idea of what money laundering is and then All right, all right, all right. Chhu, dekho, dekho. In case of money that is obtained from illegitimate sources, okay. Let's say that I involve myself in corruption, or someone involves themselves in kidnapping somebody and takes ransom, or if somebody is going through drug trade. now this is an illegitimate source of money let's say through these things this person x has made 100 crore rupees okay now this wealth is illegitimate now this person x wants to use this wealth to buy an aircraft they want to buy a jet okay but will is it possible it's not possible because they will have to explain the source of their income and since the source of their income is illegitimate it is criminal they cannot use this money directly so this money this 100 cr is effectively dirty money okay this money is dirty and cannot be directly used in the financial system so what does this person require this person requires that their dirty money that they have gotten through illegitimate crimes must be converted into clean money that can finally be used in the financial system without any perception of threat okay without any perception of them being 
charged by the authorities etc etc so how you clean this dirty money this is the process of money laundering it is a fairly technical thing you clean this dirty money and that is what money laundering is so i hope at least the concept is clear to you how it is done this we will learn so what is money laundering dirty money has to be cleaned so you have to ensure that illicit funds that have been obtained through illicit or illegitimate manner appear legitimate by concealing their true origin how can that person make sure that i as let's say an income tax officer do not think that this money is coming from an illegitimate source they have to conceal the true source jahan se wo aaya the original source needs to be concealed and some fake source needs to be assigned to it okay now how can this be done let's say i'm just teaching you a preliminary stage just a second let's say this person owns let's say this person x they own a casino okay they say that they own a casino so what will they do they will take 100 cr and firstly they will break them down into very small small transactions of let's say 10 lakhs each so they find many people and give them 10 lakh each they say that okay you can take this 10 lakh rupees from me you take this 10 lakh rupees and you come to my casino you bet this 10 lakh rupees and you lose them okay he hires some people he says you take these 10 lakh rupees you come to my casino you bet these 10 lakh rupees and you lose them okay now this money is lost now this casino can show that 100 people came to the casino they bet 10 lakh rupees they lost this rupees and this is our income right this would be fairly simplistic because then here in case in this case an income tax officer will be able to catch it ke to bahut patterned cheez hai so what they will do is they will put various layers to this that this person came they won 10 lakh they lost 5 lakh then they again came they won 10 lakh then they lost 20 lakh so various layers of transactions and in this casino not only illegitimate people are coming aisa to nahi hai ki sirf illegitimate log aa rahe normal people are also going everybody else is also going so what they will do is they will layer these transactions with many many counter transactions that this person came first day he lost 1 lakh second day he won 2 lakh three third day he did this it will take a lot of time for abhi aap 100 cr ke jagah 1 cr imagine kar lo let's say it's only 1 crore rupees not only 1 crore rupees is not only but still if it is 1 crore rupees then it looks like an easier task okay so let's say this breakdown happens okay and the person comes here and through various layer transactions one after the other one after the other the casino shows that this transactions has happened in my casino then what happens then this casino the owner of this casino who is not me i am the shadow owner or the person x is the shadow owner he invests in some other casino or some other business again another layer of transactions is added so so many layers of transactions are added that the true source of the income where this original 10 lakh has come from becomes obfuscated or hidden so you obfuscate the true source of this money now what do you do now i have done enough of this layering right i have done enough of this layering so once i have layered the transactions enough then what do i do i am mr x i take this one cr and use it to buy whatever i want it to if i buy an aircraft or let's say i use this 1 crore to buy a luxury car now this money this 1 cr of illegitimate money has gone to whom it has gone to let's say mercedes benz india now once mercedes benz india has this money any money that is coming to mercedes benz india they are an organization whose data is clear whose books are clear everybody knows where their money comes from so this then they will spend this somewhere maybe this they will give salary to some of their employees when they give salary to their employees this person y who is a mercedes benz employee now has illegitimate money that was obtained through ransom which was obtained through corruption as normal salary that was completely legitimate so what has happened that illegal money that started here this dirty money that started through corruption ransom drug trading 
that has reached the hands of some legitimate employee who now can spend it into the system. So what has happened? The money, the illegitimate money has become integrated. It has become integrated into the financial system. Understood? So there are three steps. The first step was what? Breaking down this large sum of money into small sums and using it to and then after this breakdown is done, these small, small sums are placed into the financial system. This first step of money laundering is called placement, where you place funds into the, into the financial system. Then what was done? The second step was making so many transactions that the true source becomes obfuscated. This is called layering. You attach layers to the funds. The third step and the final step is integration, where this money gets integrated, where this money gets integrated into the financial system. So in this case, what is effectively happening is first the money is broken down, broken down into many small sums, then many transactions to obfuscate that money, finally integrated. Placement, layering and integration. If you think about it, you will realize that this is the riskiest stage. The risk is maximum at the placement stage. Why? Because at this stage, people can judge still those 10 lakh rupees, that small sum that was given that could come into the minds of the authorities that where did he get this extra 10 lakhs or where did he get this extra 1 lakh? Because at this stage, you are just breaking the sum down. Layering is the second stage. And integration is the last stage. This is the hardest to catch. Okay. Here it is very hard to find out where, how the money has come because now it has almost become legitimate. So these are the three steps of money laundering. Understood. Now let us read in detail. So first, what is money laundering? It's making dirty money clean. You have to conceal the true origin. The second is definition by the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. It talks of Disguising the true nature, source, location, disposition, movement, rights or ownership of the proceeds of crime and using such proceeds directly or indirectly and knowingly. This is a very important line. When we read PMLA, we will understand why this is controversial. Okay. Now, why do people do money laundering? What is the point? You will conceal your illegal activities. You will protect assets. So authorities will not be able to confiscate. Let's say I buy a car out of illegitimate money. Then otherwise, if the authorities find out that the money was illegitimate, my car will be seized. But here that will be stopped. Avoiding detection and prosecution. You are integrating into the legitimate economy. Tax evasion. Capital flight will happen. The government will be de deprived of tax, obviously. When you have to finance terror and organized crime, this is the best way to do it. You take illicit activities and then you use them to further finance illicit activities after cleaning the money once and certain entities and people who are sanctioned, they will help them to evade these international sanctions because the true source of the money will be hidden. Understood for any question that you get on money laundering. Okay. Any question that you get on money laundering, you can start. This is one of the approaches. You can start your intro with some facts. So what facts you can use? You can talk about the UN office of drugs and crime. They are saying that the global money laundered every year is two to 5% of the global GDP. This is a huge number, huge. The FATF global conviction rate for money laundering is around 1%. Enforcement directorate is saying that out of the 4,384 cases registered in the PMLA during the year of 2019-20, only 742 resulted in convictions. So you can see the conviction rate is fairly low. The RBI has talked about the number of suspicious transaction reports they have seen in 2019-20. So in any introduction or anywhere where you want to do some value addition, I've, in every topic I have made tables like this. So these will help you either in the introduction, either in the conclusion, or maybe somewhere where you need some value addition and some facts like this FATF is a great point to write about the challenges of countering money laundering. You can mention that according to the FATF, 
the global conviction rate is only 1%. Now, there are three stages. Again, placement stage, we've already read this. Riskier stage, funds are introduced in the financial system when they are broken down into small sums and deposited in banks or something else. Monetary instruments like money orders, checks, bonds, etc. are purchased. Second stage is layering. In layering, there are complex transactions where multiple transactions and routes are there to camouflage or obfuscate the source. So account transactions, high value goods, changing the denomination, even changing the currency. You change from INR to US dollar to yen to euro and back to INR. Right. Then third step is integration. In the integration state, it is reintroduced as legitimate money in financial systems. And this is the most difficult stage to detect. This we have understood. Now, next. What are some of the techniques that are used for money laundering? I just explained how a casino could be used. Then there is the Hawala system. I will don't worry. I will explain this in detail in just a minute. But these are the oldest techniques. Third party checks, physical smuggling of cash, right? For example, cash being smuggled to Switzerland for accounts because they have very secure privacy laws. The Swiss banks will not divulge your income, right? Then certain older techniques such as smurfing or structured deposits. They say people have Jandhan accounts. When you want to break down your large sum into small sums like this, you give this money to people who have Jandhan accounts and ask them to deposit in their accounts and then take it back to them. Shell companies breaking down it through credit cards, trade based where you understate or overstate the value of goods. Shell companies are companies that effectively do no business, right? And what are the latest techniques? And this was the question they had asked emerging technologies and globalization, how this is interacting with the idea of money laundering, right? This was asked to so cyber crime, identity theft, unauthorized assets, cyber crime, fraud, securities, markets, hedge funds, participatory notes, insurance, effective or insurance fraud, P notes you must have read about using cryptocurrencies and using NFTs. NFT stands for non-fungible tokens by inflating their value. Aap uski value itni bada do, and then you pay for it by your illegitimate money. So your money appears legitimate. Digital currencies in video games, micro transaction and mobile payments to spur deposit. This does not mean that all NFTs are illegitimate. It means that they could be used. Virtual asset providers, dark net. You must have read this for science and tech and prelims. Darknet and virtual asset for weak know your customer oversight. So this could be the recent, you know, techniques that are used. So this is just a summary of techniques, oldest techniques, then further techniques and now the latest techniques. Okay. Now let's first talk of the Hawala system. Hawala system kaise kaam karta hai? Hawala word, this word Hawala means trust. Okay. It basically works on trust. What happens is I am person A who wants to send money to person B. If I send it through the government channels, if I send it through government channels, there will be two things. Firstly, in the government channels, I will have to show that the source of the money is legitimate. If I want to send, let's say 10 crore rupees to somebody in Senegal, then I need to show that I need my income should be enough to have 10 crore rupees. And I have to then pay tax on that income and it will go through the proper channels. Correct. This is what is required. If I want to send 10 crore rupees to a terrorist in Senegal. Okay. Now, and the person who is receiving it, third thing, person who is receiving it also must be legitimate. The cause must be legitimate. Understood? Here in the Havala system, what happens is I want to avoid all three of these things. So I want to avoid source. I want to avoid the tax and I want to avoid the legitimate sender. So my money that I have gotten is illegitimate. I don't want to pay tax on it. And the person who is getting the money, he is also not legitimate. So everything is illegitimate. So what do I do? I give my cash to a person called Hawaladar A. He is in India. Okay. I trust that this person will get my cash to Senegal. So I give him this cash 
and he gives me a code. Let's say A B C D is my code. Now there is no physical movement of cash to Senegal. No physically cash has not moved to Senegal. But this Hawaladar A has a person called Hawaladar B in Senegal. Okay. And Hawaladar A calls Hawaladar B and says that a person B will come to you. I have received the money. When he gives you a code, this code when this is given to you, you give him 10 crore rupees. Then what do I do? I then call Mr. B and tell him that our code for the transaction is ABCD. Mr. B goes to Hawaladar B, gives this code ABCD and Mr. B then gets after you know this code is given, Mr. B then gets his 10 crore rupees. Cash has not moved. He already had the cash. He will keep the cash here for further transactions. Maybe later some money has to be sent. So he has that cash with him. Okay. And they will take a very small fee. No proof of identification is required. No ID is required. No proof of transfer is required. Nothing is required. Directly without any payment, without any ID, without telling the source of my income, without legitimizing my business, I have transferred business from A, transferred money from A to B. So I have done a clean transaction using dirty money. This is the first and the oldest form of money laundering called the Hawala system. Hawala works for the word stands for trust because of course it is a trust based operation, right? It is a method of transferring money internationally. Illegal, it is a form of money laundering. No physical movement of money happens, does not go through the banking system. So RBI has no oversight and this is covered under the PMLA. PMLA stands for Prevention of Money Laundering Act. It's also covered under the FEMA. FEMA stands for Foreign Exchange Management Act. Why is it used? There is low exchange rate, low commission. You can transfer unaccounted money. There is no paperwork, no physical movement of cash, no ID. Understood? This was the old system and it's unlikely that they will ask you about Hawala, but I understand it's called curiosity. Hoti hai, maine bata diya. This is exactly what they had asked in 2021. In that 2021 question, when they had asked about emerging technologies and globalization. So emerging technologies, may the first thing you need to write here is about cryptocurrencies. So how do cryptocurrencies work? They work on decentralized ledgers using blockchain technology. There is no central issuing authority in a cryptocurrency. It is immune from government regulations. So there is no government regulation that is there and it is a anonymous nature, pseudonymous nature. So you cannot track this, right? So what is happening here is you are using cryptocurrency. You use illegitimate money to first buy cryptocurrency. Then once you buy that cryptocurrency, there is a service called a crypto mixer. What a crypto mixer does is that let's say I have cryptocurrency has wallets. I hope you know this. Nahi pata hai, jab science and tech means ke liye padhenge, then we'll do it. Cryptocurrency has wallets. Okay. And you store that cryptocurrency in a particular wallet. So what it does is you, this crypto mixer will take money from different people from different wallets and outcome the cryptocurrency in different people in different wallets. The amount will stay same. The people who are getting the money will stay same, but the transactions will be obfuscated. I hope this is looking similar to the layering process to you, right? What they are doing is they are taking an identifiable cryptocurrency tokens from one wallet and output unidentifiable tokens to different wallets. Like you can see here. Now here I might be able to find out that this cryptocurrency was brought through illegitimate money. But if I do crypto mixing digitally, there will be many cryptocurrencies. And now I will not be able to see if there was legitimate or illegitimate. What is the source, etc. Right? So this is crypto mixing. It is similar to money laundering and there is distributed nature of cryptocurrency. So this is even in practice because there is no central issuing authority. You can do this. Now, this is, there are some terms here that you need to know and you need to write. There are mixer, tumbler, mixer, as you see, you can see from the name, then there is chain hopping. Chain hopping means that your cryptocurrency that you have bought will hop from one uh, blockchain to the other blockchain to the other blockchain to the other blockchain. So there will be chain hopping, bit cloak, dark laundering. 
these are money laundering services or they are they call themselves crypto mixers so this crypto mixer services right they help in doing this process so as per reuters the international news agency about 4 billion every year 4 billion dollars are stolen from crypto exchanges and then this illegitimate money is turned into cryptocurrency transformed into one cryptocurrency from the other through mixing tumbling chain hopping blit cloaking dark laundering these processes from identifiable tokens tokens i hope you know if you've read cryptocurrency tokens that could be identified to you and the source where it could be identified to tokens that are unidentifiable and then finally there is prevention when finally there becomes the money becomes integrated and the money becomes legitimate so here the money laundering process is slightly different because it starts with layering since the money is already in the placement stage since there is no central authority issuing the money it starts with layering then gets integrated there is mixing tumbling chain hopping and cryptocurrency helps money laundering so in your question about globalization and emerging technologies impacting money laundering the first dimension could be let's say cryptocurrencies and you could explain this now let us see another dimension where money laundering is there especially due to the effect of globalization this is illegal wildlife trade so as per the fatf fatf stands for financial action task force it is the world's watchdog of illegitimate monetary activities so fatf says that illegal wildlife trade is a major transboundary organized crime it fuels corruption it threatens biodiversity what is basically happening is that there are let's say some or uh, some flora or fauna in india let's say there is the indian rhinoceros whose trade is banned what they will do is they will take the indian rhino they will poach in the host country i'll just show you the process also they will poach in the biodiversity risk host country then they will move it around in various countries they will do various transactions they will let's say go to china then go to japan then go to vietnam then let's say africa then europe then south america they will hide the country of origin through diverting shipments from one place to the other and finally they will deliver the product let's say rhino horns and here they will place and layer the cash using cash deposits using money value transfer systems like hawala using third party wire transfers so the illegal wildlife trade that is happening in the world that is also a source of money laundering because the cash that is being used for this wildlife trade is illegitimate even the process is illegitimate and through the process of money laundering it is then this cash that is being used these transactions are becoming normalized and integrated into our financial system so now what happens here what happens here is that a there is a threat of zoonotic diseases then what are the drivers rich biodiversity and bad law enforcement in the source country so if a country has good biodiversity but it has bad law enforcement that will become a source then there are private zoos so these private zoos will hide this animal that is not meant to be traded this exotic animal will be hidden by these private zoos there is new communication technology and e banking so these are drivers of this illegal wildlife trade then this is just wrong it should be cites the i is extra here convention on international trade of species and endangered fauna this cites convention this is trying to tackle this if you know it has some appendices etc environment mein padhaya tha and then recent fatf report has come out that money laundering and illegal wildlife trade generates an estimate of 23 billion dollars annually with a significant portion of these proceeds becoming laundered so what happens is this trade generates this money and then this money has to be laundered to be used because again the source is illegitimate so this is laundering now another aspect that you need to mention is zoonotic diseases zoonotic diseases are diseases that cross over from animals into humans so zoonotic diseases underlines the importance you know the fact that zoonotic diseases are spreading even covid-19 was a zoonotic disease the fact that these diseases are spreading shows that illegal wildlife trade needs to be countered 
and illegal wildlife trade is not only giving a rise to money laundering it's also giving a rise to these zoonotic diseases okay now process of money laundering we have seen let's move forward this is the entire process there is placement you take dirty money you spread it into various accounts then you do high value transactions you move from one place to the other this is layering and finally you legitimize it into the system called integration and finally it becomes clean okay now what are the challenges first challenge as we have read in the fatf report also there is no rate of conviction of any any crime that is happening the fatf also says rate of conviction is hardly 1% then the fast paced evolution of technology right so technology is moving very fast this is also a point for that question about emerging technology because the way or the pace of movement of technology is much faster than the evolution of laws and regulatory mechanisms so emerging technology becomes a huge problem then it is a predicate offense oriented law predicate offense means that there is a crime and then there is a crime as a subset of the first crime so let's say producing illegal funds is a crime and money laundering is a subset of that this would mean predicated offense so till you do not produce illegal funds money laundering cannot be a stand alone crime for you i am not teaching this in detail because this has been corrected by the pmla amendment of 2019 money laundering now in india is an independent crime lack of awareness about its seriousness among common people so people don't understand that these cash transactions or hawala transactions they are you know people are using them just to skip the common banking network they don't understand that this money can go to terrorist financing then widespread smuggling of goods in india leading to black money cash based transactions banks failing to enforce kyc norms multiplicity of agencies and tax haven countries again a point for your globalization when there is globalization we are talking about a global minimum tax so there is countries like switzerland like cayman islands like the bahamas where no matter what money you get if it is legitimate illegitimate it does not matter to them they will take it right okay now let's move forward these are the challenges why we are not able to fight money laundering what are the efforts that the government has made of course the first is the prevention of money laundering act it talks about the confiscation of property related to money laundering it says that any banking and financial institution has the obligation to maintain records to furnish financial intelligence to the fiu financial intelligence unit india the fiu india is a nodal agency for receiving this information it coordinates national and international intelligence and who does it report to it reports to the economic intelligence council that is headed by the ministry of minister of finance so the fiu reports to the eic the head of the eic is the finance minister so this is also set up under the pmla then there is a three member adjudicating authority for money laundering crimes there is a schedule in the pmla that gives crimes for money laundering and cross border money laundering so india can there is a provision for dealing with cooperation for cross border money laundering so that india can return confiscated property as per un convention against corruption we'll read about un convention against corruption also the first amendment happened in 2019 the 2019 amendment what did it do it empowered the enforcement directorate this is the main agency that is dealing with money laundering in india it made money laundering a stand alone crime and not only a predicate offense this has also been recently upheld by the supreme court we will see that case also it widened the definition of the proceeds of crime so what the pmla originally said was proceeds of crime this was the term that was used to deal with illegitimate money this definition has been widened so that even new techniques of money laundering can be covered the offenses have been made cognizable and non bailable arrest can be without warrant and even the concealment again of the proceeds of crime and projecting it as untainted money has been made a crime then the 2023 amendment what did it do it tightened the definition of beneficial ownership i'll just explain this to you it expanded due diligence requirement by institution so not just kyc not just pan you have to take registration certificates darpan registration for ngo so 
people so that through ngos are also a way i'm sure you are understanding that money can be laundered through ngos also through anonymous donations in the sector so unki kyc karani hai unke pan cards lene hai taki unka jo source of money hai that can be traced now defines politically exposed persons individuals who have been entrusted with promoting public functions by a foreign country including head of state etc taki in logon ke paas jo paisa hai that can be dealt with and expanded although we will deal with this in detail in the next class so we will understand that and it has widened the definition of a non profit organization then the other effort is the enforcement directorate which is an institutional effort it enforces the fema and the pmla the administrative control is with the department of revenue and legislation and administration is by the department of economic affairs both in the ministry of finance so this is the issue of the pmla so what has happened is there is some so what are the basically i'll just tell you first and then i'll teach you there was a case they aap likh lena please although i mean to deal with this in the next class in detail it was called vijay madanlal choudhary versus union of india and others in this case of vijay madanlal choudhary and union of india versus others is case mein the supreme court has upheld the validity of many provisions of the prevention of money laundering act so iski amendment act aur iske provisions we'll see in the next class i think we can stop here today because kafi ho gaya hai aaj ke liye it's already close to 230 so in the next class we'll start here we'll start with the prevention of money laundering act and jo iski details hain right if you want to see aage i'll just show you what we have done if you could read this before coming to the next class that would be great isme jo uske sections hain jo uske ideas hain uske bare mein likha hai i'll teach you this some things i've written on the side that also i'll teach you then the way forward for pmla is in the form of pmla taki aapko yaad reh jaye right then we have the international mechanisms for dealing with money laundering even the recent ones then the impact of money laundering the social impact the economic impact i'll also teach you here how you can draw cycles like these so that you know this impact question could be you can draw some diagrams in your answers then security impact political impact environmental impact then we'll read about the way forward for money laundering then we will read about the fatf recommendations this can be directly your conclusion for any answer on money laundering then the conclusion then we'll read about black money the fact sheet of black money what are the sources of black money what are the positive effects perceived positive effects black money has no positive effects but some perceived positive effects the detrimental effects of course and finally the measures to go with it and the way forward for black money which has been written in the form of step forward so this mnemonic is there for pmla the mnemonic is pmla for black money the mnemonic is step forward for you to write a conclusion in this form so that you can remember these points and finally we will deal with black money and terrorism after this we will move on to further topics okay so next class is going to be on friday friday we will continue from here and deal with the next topic of security maybe i think we'll do terrorism next so friday and saturday both days we have security class and after this the next class will be on tuesday i think on tuesday we will be able to finish most of security we have done the first topic the biggest topic was linkages between development and spread of extremism we'll do this next after this let us do border management so we'll after on friday we'll finish money laundering we'll finish black money thoda sa hi reh gaya if you've understood the process now then we will do border management security challenges and their management in border areas here we will read about the vibrant villages program the one that is there in this year's budget very likely that question can be asked okay so that's it for today